Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wilhelm Scream and welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 for some more Destiny 2 news and Beyond Light Season of the Splicer Intel. Hopefully everybody's been enjoying Season of the Splicer so far. The new six person activity is fairly interesting, very reminiscent of the Prophecy Dungeon. I enjoy it. It's sort of a good romp, which I think is always something that Destiny needs. Very menagerie-esque if you ask me. But that's not why you're here today. Like all seasons in the past, we get a whole bunch of new seasonal materials that we have to farm for. Some of these are specific to this season's activities and moving forward, but others are new to the game altogether and really don't revolve around this season in particular, but most notably Transmog is back in the game and I know that this has been somewhat of a point of contention within the community as the ability to create ornaments is sort of limited and if you want more you have to pay for them. But I actually think it'll work out overall in the long run. So today I'm going to be helping you for the time being farm out the said material which is synth strand that will allow you to get your hands on as many ornaments as possible so far this season. I'll also give you a good rundown on a great way to farm out ether for the seasonal activity so you can rank up and get all those new mods from the servitor in the helm. Gonna get to all that information in just one second, but first I just wanna remind everybody I'm still doing the giveaway on my YouTube channel. The next one will be at 50,000 subscribers. All you have to do to be entered into that giveaway is like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on the post notification, the bell that's right next to the big red subscribe button, and follow me on Instagram or Twitter. They'll be linked in the description box down below. You can also find a link to my Discord channel if anybody's looking for any help in any of the new activities or things that we discuss. And as always, if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll have a secret hashtag you can leave in the comment section to be entered into that giveaway a second time for this video. And remember, those secret hashtags, they stack between all videos. So if you haven't done this on a previous piece of content on this channel, why not go back, check out another video, and of course, do it again. Okay, so you want to farm out some ether so you can get your bounties for the servitor and the seasonal activities, but you also want to get out synth strand as fast as possible, all in the easiest way you possibly can. Say you're a solo player and you just don't have time to do a whole bunch of stuff every day, but you really want to have all those ornaments or at least as many ornaments as you can get. Well, this AFK farm glitch will allow you to do both. It's an old one, but a good one. It has been around for a while. At least the farm has. The glitch, not so long. I did cover it a little bit, uh, I think last season, but we'll go through it again now. So, here is the final goal to this glitch. Ending in the Shattered Throne dungeon. Shattered Throne is a great place because of the endless cursed thrall room essentially you'll get an endless supply of enemies that you can kill killing enemies will give you both ether and synth strand now if you're on a titan you're going to be the most suited to do this particular farm because you can just create some warrior and uh, one melee will do you and then just sit there and rake in all the ether and synth strand that you want. But this is simply just going to the Shattered Throne. Not a glitch. Good farm, but not a glitch. Now, of course, if you want to get to this point, you would normally have to progress through the Shattered Throne dungeon as you would normally. I say normal twice, but yes, normal twice. You would have to go into the Shattered Throne dungeon get through all the encounters up to the Cursed or Endless Thrall room, and then you'd be able to uh, use this farm to its fullest extent. But that can be a little bit daunting, especially if you're a new player, especially if you've never done Shattered Throne before. So if that's something you're looking to do, I would suggest maybe teaming up with somebody else. 
but we're talking about doing this solo and we're talking about glitching. So we are now going to move on past just the farm and show you how you can actually get to this room without actually having to do the dungeon and without having any sort of kill barrier. And what I mean by that is, is that as you progress through, if you die, rather than having to repeat a whole section, you'll simply just respawn at the last available spot that you were alive. So now for that, you can watch this video. And I'll give you a little bit of a tutorial, but I'll only really check in on the major parts. But essentially what we're doing here is again I am on a um, Titan in this case this is probably easiest done on a Titan uh, especially since the Sun Warrior is really going to be the thing you want um, it's very easy on a Warlock at least the glitch part but then once you get to the farm uh, you have to make sure you have the right things with you I'm not sure if a hunter can do this I wouldn't put it past them a good hunter can really do anything but Overall, this is not going to be the most efficient way, uh, probably, to farm materials for uh, a hunter, sadly. But the great thing is, is that if you have three characters, it doesn't matter which one you pick up these materials on. If you pick Ether up on a Titan, you can use it on your Warlock, uh, and vice versa. So I would suggest, just for this case, even if you're not somebody who plays on a Titan very often, get on one. Use the Lion Ramp of Boots and a sword. That's going to be two essential things. So just progress through the Shattered Throne as normal. Take a left right as you enter the first door. And then hold the left till you get to this ledge. Drop down. And then fly your way over to this ledge. Now this gets a little tricky because there's an invisible wall right in front of you that you have to sort of jump over. Once you're over, drop directly down. Otherwise, you might get a kill barrier there which teleports you back to the beginning. But with enough practice, you'll get the hang of it. Essentially, up and over. That's how you want to do it. Use a sword to get through this load zone. And then once you're through the load zone and into the descent, simply drop down and then jump off of this ledge. You'll die and you'll respawn in the descent. At this point, you will not have any kill barrier. So don't worry about dying. Just headstrong through it like you would if you weren't worried about uh, anything. You don't have to take your time with any of the enemies. You just can take a sword. You do have to kill certain enemies so that certain areas open up to you. But as you can see, it's fairly simple. I like to jump on this side of the wall so I can actually make my way all the way around this ledge. And you can kind of get up onto that ledge if you want. But I just like to make my way all the way around so that I can get to the boss as fast as possible and just sword them to death. As you'll see me die, I'll actually spawn back up on that top ledge. Right here. But that's just because this was like the last place that I actually was planted on the ground. If I progress a little bit further and say I land on this ledge, which is a little bit difficult, but you can actually fairly easily make your way around to uh, this side. This is actually a fairly good strat if you're just trying to do the Shattered Throne in general is by making your way up onto the right side. Because now when I die, I'm actually just going to spawn right here. So that like, makes it even easier. I can just drop down and uh, kill the boss. Once that boss is dead, the door will open up. I don't really have to bother with the other ads unless they're just an inconvenience. But you can just progress forward at that point. As you can see, I spawned back up here. But now I can just drop down and make my way through the door. Now in this next section, you'll sort of incrementally progress, meaning if you kill a certain level, a certain amount of enemies on one side, um, and then you die, you'll actually respawn in that same room, but maybe just a little bit ahead of where you were last time. But then once you're through that room, uh, you can just make your way uh, through the ogre room by just sort of jumping on these left side pillars and platforms.
don't fall off like I did here. Great thing is that if you do, you'll just respawn right there. So you can see it's really anywhere where you touched ground last. It's kind of a weird spawn mechanic. But you can take your time. As you can see, I've made my way down to the Cursed Thrall Room uh, really much faster than if I had just progressed through the dungeon normally. So you can, using this method and glitch, you can make your way down here within five minutes versus maybe 25 or 30 minutes um, for a novice player, maybe, you know, 10 minutes for a very uh, proficient player or somebody who's very familiar with this particular dungeon. The tough thing about this dungeon uh, is this, it's just so dark. So there's a lot of things that um, sometimes, in my opinion, are very hard to see, much harder to see than necessary. Another thing you can take advantage of is there is a secret chest that you can get here just by making your way to the ledge. Jumping down onto this platform. You can grab this secret chest. And these clips were recorded before um, this current season, but believe me when I tell you, it still works. But that's why the loot is a little low. Um, this clip, as you can see, was obviously recorded now as I am getting Ether and uh, Synth Strand. So once you get that secret chest, you can go through that portal. It'll teleport you back up onto that platform like you saw me do. And then you can just make your way over to this particular section. Um, this is if you take a left at the ledge as you or excuse me, as you teleport back up, you'll be facing sort of the door you came in. Go to the right and just make your way to this corner of this room. There's sort of a little like bench behind me. I don't know why specifically this spot, but uh, I've noticed that with an emote and um, the Sun Warrior proct, you can actually uh, walk away from your console or computer for at least 25 minutes without um, being teleported back to orbit. I use a endless emote, so a emote that basically just continues to run. It has no uh, set time frame so unlike you know the uh, selfie emote where you show yourself taking the selfie it takes a selfie and then the emote ends uh, I, I personally like the the DJ emote just because it continually goes on but anything that continually goes on uh, will serve the same purpose so thank you all so much for watching all the way till the video uh, ends um, for the secret hashtag you can leave in the comments section today leave a hashtag season of the splicer or a hashtag beyond light or a hashtag ether farm or a hashtag synth strand farm um, or anything associated with any of those or something maybe just a comment of something you've been enjoying so far in uh, season of the splicer as always i am wilhelm scream of course we will see you in the next video Little.